Hi, Mr. Ryan from Better Tattooing, and uh, I don't know, viewer request. Today we're going to give you some tips for using mag needles. All right. Okay, now that's over with. Um, super bright out today. It's nice. It's uh, seems to not be so much of the uh, the winter anymore. So we figured, hey, why not enjoy the weather by staying inside in the garage and making a couple videos. So um, here we go. Tips for using mags and flats. So more often than not, and I like I can't even stress this one. I don't know, like. The, the tips that you're going to get for using flats and mags are just going to be wrong, right? Um, I've been watching YouTube again, which is, you know, just not, not the smartest thing to do, even though we're hosts on YouTube. I'm not talking, like, about us, of course, just everyone else, because that's how we roll. Um, sorry, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> um, when you're perusing around, you're trying to figure out how to use mags. Um, more often than not, you get a couple tips, right? So the, the first one is going to be when we're using a mag, we want to do small circles, right? The idea is, is that, you know, with our flat, if we look at it, you know, kind of straight on, there are needles, you know, in all areas here, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to be using this and this rounded motion. And as the needles are making contact with the skin, that they're going to end up filling in a space, right? Now, this can work but it's not as efficient as we would think, right? Like this is the same type of thing that we actually would use with a round grouping, right? If we do like a five round here, it's a hollow five. When this is moving around, we're actually gonna be able to get some type of saturation. What happens with flats? Well, when our flats start making contact, we're going around in circles. This is, this is why it's not a good advice anyways. Um, what happens is, is that on average, we're only gonna be hitting some of the needles versus not, right? So when they're coming into contact, we're coming around, we're gonna be getting spots where it's actually just kind of lifting and not fully going into the skin. Um, so you're gonna get superficial implantation of the pigment as it goes in, right? What's gonna happen is you're gonna see sometimes marks like this inside the skin where the pigment is, and next to it, you're actually gonna see the skin almost split, right? Why is this happening? Well, as we're going in, the needles are just basically like lifting into the skin and then picking out of it, right? So they're just ripping it up. If we go to our skin model like this, right? It's not actually gonna be doing anything. It just is gonna increase damage to the skin. It's gonna take longer for the skin to heal, right? And if we try to go over multiple passes, we're just gonna end up munching up the skin to such a degree that it's not gonna be able to hold any pigment. So small circles, um, especially with like larger mags, are just a bad idea. We don't, we don't wanna do this. Um, it doesn't work. I mean, it, it, like it can work. I know there's going to be technicalities. Some people are going to be like, oh, you're stupid. Like small circles totally work for me when I'm using a seven mag. Yeah, some seven mags might, right? But if you're using a 23, no, you don't use circles, right? Um, what was the other ones that we've seen here? We're going to say, you know, you're going to want to keep it. Uh, let's use the purple again here. Another tip is going to be, you know, keep perpendicular. Uh, Dick, you are and be random. Um, you can see this with a lot of wand shaders, right? You're gonna have your machine sitting here and it's basically like at a 90 degree, right? Angle off of the skin, perpendicular, right? Not parallel, perpendicular. And what you're doing is you're just basically like moving it back and forth randomly, right? So that the needle is only coming into contact with the skin very randomly in that space, right? So if we're doing shading or something, it's just gonna use this random touching, right? To slowly build pigment saturation inside the skin, depending on your dispersion, this can take a long time uh, or it can be relatively quick. Uh, why don't we do this? Well, because it's random, right? It's gonna take a lot of guesswork or at least experience, especially if you're newer to try and figure out like, if I have a lot of saturation in one spot, not so much in another, maybe a medium amount in this, how am I supposed to even those things out, right? Now, if we're just doing this, like the wand technique comes in handy if we have some shading that we're doing and we maybe just need to fan the edges out, right? Like if you have a spot, or let's say we have a bunch of even shading on one side, like you've, you've pushed, right? You have your overlap starting here, right? And it's a bit darker in the center, right? Well, we can decidedly like do that one motion next to it to build up some of that saturation to make it appear smoother, especially once it heals, right? But if we're trying to do something just like first pass, simple, decreasing amount of trauma, this isn't very efficient. And at the same time, you're gonna waste a ton of pigment when you just sit there and flick gently over top of it. 
Um, especially when you're new. You don't have a lot of control over the actual pigment flow in the needle. So I don't agree with this one either, right? So, a little wand flick shading, stuff like that, just stick away from that. Um, what can we actually do? So let's do our smiley one, yes. Um, if we're gonna be doing these, we wanna do a shovel method. We'll do, yeah, let's do that. Shovel, shovel it, right? The shovel it is gonna change our, our approach to this, right? We're not trying to be random, we're not trying to do anything, right? What we're gonna do is, let's say we have a space, we'll do our skin model again, right? We wanna go from a dark gradient here and we want it to be light here. That is like super blocky D. Anyways, we're gonna set our um, mag, which is usually gonna be at about 70 degrees, right? Off of the skin, we'll do 70 degrees, right? Of an angle. And um, when it's coming in contact with the skin, we'll do it like that, right? All we're gonna do is just push into the skin and out. Almost like we're trying to dig out something, right? We're using it like a shovel. We're gonna be very specific about that, right? We're gonna start just behind where we wanna go, push and almost flick out. That shoveling, as you're going, you're just gonna keep moving it side to side, right? Like you're gonna do a push and just kinda of like two thirds overlap something and slowly build your stuff out. It's great for shading as well as like fanning out base colors when you're getting into something. Like if I'm gonna be doing this from here, I'll have a section where I've gone and pushed this out, right? I'm gonna come back in two thirds overlay push that two thirds you know what I mean and you just like keep fanning out like this what you're gonna do is you're gonna see a darker concentration up here right that's gonna end up getting lighter as it moves forward it's great super easy it, it doesn't take a lot of practice to do this and it actually works well coming off of lines as well um, sometimes you'll just like have this bit of a gap here and that that happens to everyone right especially when you're new uh, first few years or something you might have these gaps you're going in if, if you're seeing this rather than trying to keep filling it in with your mag grab a liner right and you're gonna hit that spot with a liner as opposed to trying to fan in again with, with your mag. Cause it's, you're not gonna hit it right. Usually what happens or why this happens when you're using a mag is the line is here. We'll go with our skin, right? We have our line here, right? And uh, do the full model. What's happening is we're setting our needles right here on that line and we're trying to like fan shade or do anything else, right? But our actual pigment is gonna end up in front of it. Right. So, I mean, you can't always adjust your needle to try and get that closer and closer, but I've always found it's just not as clean to do it that way. Cause you're also in like, like putting extra trauma into the skin ahead of it. Right. So if you start tipping up and up and up, you're going to get a greater propensity of like blowing out, blowing under, or even trying to get like, trying to get it as clean as possible. You can overwork the skin to such a degree that as the tattoo ages, it's going to end up bleeding out a lot rather than stay relatively clean. Right. So if you just come in next to your lines, when you're running it, you have this off the side, right? Blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, this is an actual ink. Ha! And you've got that space. Take your liner and make sure you're pushing in off the edge of the line, right? And just fill in. If you go one way and the other, if you want to, whatever. Just make sure you've got a bit of an angle that's tipped in rather than coming straight up, right? So it's pushing that ink into it. As you start filling in, you just slowly, as you get close to the line, right? You're doing this, you just start to pick up till it's relatively straight and you're good to go. So shovel method, really good for using those mags. Um, another one we can do, and I've, I've mentioned this one before as well, is a bevel, as a bevel edge. Um, this works better with bigger mags, right? If you get like a 15 or something like that. Um, you're gonna be running a line rather than having the needle totally straight, right? On top of the skin to where it's like just 100% contact with all the needles that are there. Let's do this. What we're gonna do is basically use the needle, you know, like this. As this is moving down into the skin, we're gonna be making better contact with only some of the needles there. And as they move up and out and you're moving forward, just run like a liner, right? Like dip in the skin and push forward. The stuff that's at the bottom and at the deepest is gonna have the most saturation. As it lifts out until the stuff that's superficial is just gonna end up getting less and less saturated, right? Really simple. Bevel edge for larger. It works for smaller ones as well, but when you're doing it, sometimes you have to step, right? If it's a smaller, a smaller mag when you're doing it, let's just say it's not that big, right? And you're pushing in, you're gonna be getting like maybe three quarters to 90% of the actual needles that are in there. If it's a seven mag, maybe, you know, six out of seven. Um, what you're gonna have to do is instead of just like 
fanning it and be like, oh no, I've got two inches still I've got to do or something, right? As you do your first line and you pull it, all you're gonna do is just move up a little bit, tip it, and tilt your machine back against that, right? Creating a bit of a, like a, a tighter angle with the skin on the back side. It's gonna be getting narrower, right? And as you move up, you just keep moving in, tipping down, until you get the same desired effect. It takes a little bit more skill to do that because you're technically just like laying lines next to each other, right? Until they end up just fading off. So, shovel, bevel, last one if you're doing really strong fills. This is push it. Oh geez, rush it. <laughs> Ryan, push it. The push it is a little bit like the shovel but what we're gonna do instead of trying to lift out of the skin to create a gradation, right? We're gonna basically bury our needle the way that we want to, the proper depth. You know, if you set it off the tube tip uh, properly, you can always go with that. Someone's racing outside. Um, and all we're gonna do is run our stuff forward, pick up and move back just over the top of the skin. So realistically, think of it like tabori, right? We're taking, we're pushing it into the skin as we go. So you're gonna have small, short, jerky motions. They're gonna be two thirds overlapped as you move forward, which are gonna increase the concentrations as you get into the skin. Um, pushing it is my absolute favorite, especially if you get like black tribal, like solid color. All we're gonna do is just like push, 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 right? And just keep pushing into it, right? until you end up getting a full coverage. That's the easiest way. And that's probably the best way to use most of your mags. When you start doing circles or moving and bending and stuff, you, you're gonna increase the trauma to the skin because you're moving things in a way that they're not actually made for, right? Like if I'm trying to dig a hole in the ground and then moving it side to side with a flat shovel, it's not gonna do anything, right? I go in and move forward, right? You see a backhoe come in to dig out a big hole. It doesn't sit there and shake its bucket, right? It digs stuff out as it moves forward. So. Thank you for that request. Hopefully that helps. We'll probably do another one with this and fit some more, but we're gonna keep this short. So that's it. This is Ryan for Better Tattooing, signing off.